Welcome to Classic Value Investors and Microcap Explosions. This is Mariusz Skonieczny. In this video, I'm going to talk about the three L's and risk versus reward ratio. So what I mean by three L's is how can you go broke? Leverage, ladies and liquor. And if you've been paying attention to the news, you know that uh, Archegos Capital, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, which was run by Bill Huang, uh, a private office, in other words, he was mostly managing his money, it wasn't like a hedge fund, blew up. And so he lost, I think, it's hard to know exactly because it was a private, but I think he lost uh, $10 billion just like this. So it took him, I believe, like 10 years to go from $2 million to like $10 billion. And it took him just a few days to lose it all. And this video is not about, you know, making fun of him or anything like that. It's just, I want to talk about the concept of, because in the investment world, like when you listen to the media and things like that, uh, you know, you get rewarded for returns. So now people like, Kathy Woods of ARK Invest is constantly in the media because she was able to generate these big returns over the last few years. Well, a guy like Bill also generated huge returns. Uh, I mean, we don't know for sure, but his returns had to be somewhere between 55% and 70% per year to be able to turn $2 million into like $10 billion. So these are fantastic returns. But you see, over the last week or so, I've received many ideas that people sent me. And I looked, I looked through 100 ideas. And I pretty much eliminated 98% of them. And two of them were interesting. I'm, I'm not investing in them, but two of them were interesting. One was Playboy Group. And then the other one, the ticker symbol is Lazy. L-A-Z-Y. and. This company is like a dealership of uh, RVs. So those out of a hundred, those two were the only ones that I found like interesting and I will probably look at them into more detail. And so most of the time that I spend when I look at ideas is pretty much rejecting them because I constantly look for risk versus reward. You see, the media is talking about the reward only. And so Bill Huang was getting rewarded with when uh, when nothing was, was going bad and the re returns were fabulous. But you see, when you look at the risk versus reward, okay, he was getting a good reward, but what kind of risk was he taking? I mean, apparently this guy was putting on five to eight times leverage, right? And so these are huge, huge risks that he was taking and it was working until it wasn't. And then he completely blew up and now as a result of this, he is broke and but now is it possible to generate returns like that 55 to 70 percent and this is why I talk about small caps or micro caps because I feel that this is the only space out there that you can actually generate those kinds of returns but with taking very little risk if you I mean, you can take a lot of risk in that space and a lot of people are taking a lot of risk. And some of the ideas that are rejected over the week were microcap ideas because they were ridiculous. I mean, way too much risk for me. The companies had no, no revenues uh, or promising product. It's all nice and perfect, but it's way too risky. But if you, you know, look into that space because it's completely ignored if you look into that space and you look for like fantastic businesses like software high margin businesses that nobody's paying attention to you can actually take very very little risk and generate huge huge returns and what i'm actually going to make a video in a few days and maybe i'll title it like how to get a hunter beggar because there is this company that i'm involved in right now and i'm hopefully going to be buying more shares next week is that it is an absolutely fantastic, fantastic business. It's like the best business out of all, all of the companies featured on Microcap Explosions. Absolutely unbelievable business. It's profitable, it's growing every year, um, and it's 
priced like enterprise value is like below one times revenues, right? And it's because the growth is, is, is there, but it's not huge growth. So uh, companies of that quality on NASDAQ, they trade for like 20 times revenues. Now, this company is not going to trade at 20 times revenues until the growth picks up. So I've been talking to the CEO and it's clear to me that you know, they, they are entering a new, new market, they, they, they develop new products and they are about to enter into this high growth uh, stage of their development. And I think that as a result of that, not only revenues will grow, uh, the, the multiple over revenues will go up significantly and I can absolutely see something like this going up 20 or 50 times but the risk is very, very low because the business is so good and if they don't succeed at it, well, no big deal because it's not priced very high and they're profitable and trading at less than one times revenue, there's a huge margin of safety. But now, when you have, but you can play in that space when you don't have a lot of money. And I think, I think you can stay in that space until you, you know, the amount of money that you have is maybe like 20, 50, maybe even a hundred million dollars. And then after that, you can't play in that space anymore. So then you have to go to the bigger names uh, where they are not as mispriced. They are more efficient. So a guy like Bill Huang was obviously playing at that higher level because you know he had billions of dollars. So in order for him to generate the kind of returns that he was looking for, the 55 to 70% returns, he had no choice but to take on a lot of leverage and take on a lot of risk. And it's all good until it works. And then it ends within seconds when it doesn't. So I just kind of wanted to talk about it because it's, it's, it's easy to focus on the upside, but I think it's useful to think about, yes, upside is great, but how much risk am I taking to get that upside? And I feel that, as I said before, I feel that the small cap or micro cap space is like this wonderful space for people that don't have billions of dollars, don't have hundreds of millions of dollars. They can really, if played right, they can really generate fantastic returns and taking very little risk. And on the top of that, you know, choosing the companies that can have like a clean balance sheet, profitable, and it's, it's simply possible because there is so little competition in that space. And when you introduce the competition to the table, then the only way you can generate these huge returns is by, you know, risking a lot and levering up a lot and entering into those three L's on how you can go broke. Ladies, liquor and leverage. Thanks for watching.